So we're talking about something called the cumulative probability distribution function. And the best way to show you this is to talk about first probability distribution functions and then the cumulative. So let's look at a probability density function. Okay, this is a good one here. Uh, f of x equals 5 on x squared when x is greater than or equal to 5. All right, so it's asymptotic because it goes on and on forever. Uh, let's take a look at what that probability density function looks like. So it looks a little bit something like this. It starts at 5 and it goes on and on and on and on forever. Asymptotic goes off into there. Um, so there's our function. Now, if we want to find the probability of a something being between 5 and 10, we would just find the area between 5 and 10. And the probability of being between 5 and 10 is about 0 0.5. If I want to know the probability of being between 5 and 20, I would just increase that integral there. Now, you can see the integral is increasing as I go down the line. And that's no surprise there. The area under the curve is getting greater and greater and greater. Now, what if I was to graph um, the x-coordinate here uh, against the probability? So let's try it out. Here's my dot, 5, 0. So at the moment, and when x is equal to 5, the area under the curve is 0. Let's increase that a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, when x is equal to 8.1, the area under the curve is 0 0.38, and you can see this curve has gone up to 0 0.38. Let's go up a little further. At 16, uh, but the area under the curve between 5 and 16 is 0 0.69. There is a 69% chance that somebody gets a score between 5 and 16, and it goes on and on and on. Oops, it goes on and on and on forever and ever and ever. Uh, and it'll get closer and closer and closer to 1, but never quite get there uh, because this is asymptotic. But you can see that at, um, say, 37.5, when x is equal to 37.5, the probability of being between 5 and 37.5 is 0 0.87. What I have created is the cumulative dis probability distribution function. Now, that function is a function that we can easily find, so let's do it. So here's our probability density function. We're going to calculate the cumulative probability density function, and we're going to do it by integrating. Surprise, surprise. We're going to denote this with a capital F because we're integrating, so we're moving up the chain here. F of x is equal to the integral, and this will be a little bit surprising. We're going between 5, that's the lower bound, no problem there, and x, and that's going to allow us to put x in there and create a cumulative probability density function. And we're integrating our function. 5 on x squared with respect to x. Okay, so integrating that, it's going to be between x and 5. Now that's the same as uh, 5x to the negative um, 2, and now I need to integrate that x to the negative 2. So that's going to be uh, increase the power by 1, that's going to be x to the negative 1, and divide by the new power, negative 1. All right, so it's just um, 5 bracket negative 1 on x, between x and 5. All right, so I'm just going to sub x in, and then I'm going to sub 5 in. So it's going to be 5 times negative 1 on x um, minus negative 1 on 5. Okay, that's the same as 5 times um, negative 1 plus 1 fifth. Negative 1 on x plus 1 fifth. And that's the same as negative 5 on x, because that's 5 times negative 1 on x. And then 5 times positive 1 fifth is 1. All right, so we're pretty much done there. Uh, it's probably just neater to write that as this um, 1 minus 5 on x. So uh, what is that? That is just pure gold because now we can sub in any value of x and find out the probability of um, somebody being between that x and 5 or some score being between that x and 5. Now I'm going to use my new cumulative distribution function which remember looks like this blue line here. 
Uh, and I'm going to use that to calculate three different probabilities. So the first one is the probability that x is less than or equal to 7. Now on our, um, on our graph, that looks like, like right over here, from 5 to 7, not 7.1. But my answer is going to be about 0 0.3, and you can see that my graph, my cumulative distribution function, is also spitting out uh, 7.1, 0 0.3. So that's about what I'm aiming for. All right, so if I'm going to do that, I just write it straight into my function, just sub the number 7 in for the x, and it's equal to 1 minus 5 on 7. 1 minus 5 sevenths is 2 sevenths. If I type that into my calculator, I will get 0 0.2857, close enough to that 0.3 that I was aiming for when I had 7.1. A equals 7, you can see we've got 0 0.29 there. That's what we got. This next one's a little bit trickier because you can see it's a, a greater than sign. So what are we looking for? Not looking for the area under the curve between 5 and 6. We're looking for the area under the curve between 6 and infinity. But we can still do that using our cumulative distribution function. So we can say, this is our second question, we can say that the probability that x is greater than or equal to 6 is equal to 1 minus the probability uh, that x is less than 6, or in this case, between 5 and 6. And now I can write that down as 1 minus f of 6. And I can sub 6 into my equation, which is uh, 1 minus, be careful with your brackets here, 1 minus 1 minus 5 on 6, which is 1 minus 1 sixth, which is 5 sixths. So uh, as a decimal, it's 0 0.8333, which is what you would expect because our answer was 0 0.17 and the opposite of 0 0.17, or the complement, I suppose, is 0.83. Finally, for this last example, we're going to do the probability between 10 and 20. On our graph, uh, 20 is over here, uh, here, and 10 is back here. So all we need to do is find um, this number for 10, that number for 20, and subtract one from the other. So the probability that x is between 10 and 20 is equal to f of 20 minus f of 10, and we sub both of those numbers into our formula. And once I've subbed both of those numbers in, I do my calculation, and I'll get 1 quarter, uh, which, of course, is equal to exactly 0 0.25. All right, pretty useful. The cumulative probability distribution function, you integrate once, and then you have this nice, neat little thing. You can just sub values in, and it'll spit out probabilities on the other side.